Hello and welcome back to another episode of Harvester. We worked out some bugs and uh, yeah, we got a few things done. Don't know exactly how I did it, but we enabled the keystrokes again. So now we'll be able to see our saved games, we'll be able to type things. So we had to do a little bit of backstepping, but mistakes were made. Alright, just to make sure, we're going to click on some things. Cardboard cutout cookies. We're going to talk well, to Mom. Hello there. How about some cookies? There's plenty of rejects in the trash. Who are you? That's a fine way to talk to your mother. You're my mother? That's right. Though sometimes I get treated like the hired help around here. I don't remember you. Of course you don't. Until you need your socks washed. No, you don't understand. I can't remember where I am or even who I am. Land's sake, stop your joshing, won't you? Honestly, Steve, I thought you'd grow up a little after graduation. I only hope that new job will plant your feet on the ground. So that's my name. Steve. Your name will be M.U.D. Mud if you don't stop teasing me, young man. Listen, this may sound strange. But I've lost my memory. Do you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious. Sure, and next you'll be telling me you don't remember Hank and your little sister. All right. So we're going to go through and ask these questions once again. When did I graduate? Four months ago, as if you could forget that. What college? College? A high school diploma is all you need to get a job. And besides, you can't marry Stephanie if you're going to waste your time going to college. Eighteen years old and you're just now getting your first job. It's a disgrace, but better late than never. I guess we can thank Stephanie for that. Stephanie? And just who is Stephanie? Don't you dare toy with that sweet girl. If you start in on her with all this amnesia poop, she'll think her fiancé is having second thoughts about the wedding. Let's try asking about a job. That's right, a job. Your father has everything set up at the meat plant. After your honeymoon with Stephanie, you'll start out as a butcher in the slaughterhouse just like anybody else. Don't expect any favors just because you're the boss's son. <laughs> Let's ask about the baby. Stop speaking nonsense, dear. The bake sale is on Friday, and yet you're baking the cookies now. Never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. But they'll be stale by then. That's why I'm throwing them away. And then cooking more? To replace the ones I throw out. Why? Well, I have to. No one's going to pay to eat stale cookies out of the garbage can. But you expect me to. Of course not, Steve. I wouldn't charge you. I'm your mother. Help yourself. Okay. So... She might be crazy. Might be. Work at a slaughterhouse? My memory may be shaky, but I do know I don't want to spend my life as a butcher. You'll get used to it, Steve. Sooner or later, you'll have to. That sounds like a threat. Just a fact. Harvest is a small town, and if you want to be with Stephanie, you'll have to get your hands dirty. Jobs are scarce, so it's either work for your father, or join the lodge if you can. Harvest is a town unlike any you've ever known. In what way? I don't have time to go into it now. Why not take a walk around town and pester someone else? I'm busy. You know what? I'm gonna grab a notepad here and a pen. This may be helpful to do. I'm gonna grab a pen. There we go. We got ourselves our handy dandy notebook. What you gonna do? You can too. So we also want to ask about the bake sale. 
because that was an option that came up. Let's go ahead and ask about the lodge. What lodge? Stephanie. The, of the order of the Harvest Moon, Steve. It's just the finest place in Harvest, and the most exclusive. What's so great about it? Order of the Harvest Moon. Hard to say since hardly anyone gets inside, but it wouldn't be so exclusive if it wasn't just wonderful. Just like the new Reynolds dishwasher with their patented auto dry process TM. I've never used one, but I know I want it. Instead of stalking around the house all day, why not walk over to the lodge and apply for membership? Really? They added in a trademark item? Why not? I'll go look into it. Or should I be disrespectful? Hmm. What do you think, Mr. Boo? Should I be respectful and say, why not? I'll go look into it. Or should I say, t you know, option two. Hey, the last thing I want is a fez on my head. I mean... I mean, she is bat bat chick crazy. I might get, you know, a spoon to the neck or something. That or worse. You know what? She scares me. I'm gonna go with one. Why not? I'll That's go look into wonderful, it. wonderful, Steve. If you got into the lodge, you'd be the talk of Harvest. Let's ask about bake sale. Well, you already did ask about bake sale. She just told you. But you can go ask her again. Yeah, why what not? What charity is this bake sale supposed to benefit? It'll help provide a fund for bums and hobos who wander into Harvest. Oh, wait, no, a different option. Time. Okay. Kind of a specific target group, isn't it? You have to pay attention to detail when dealing with such people. I don't know what you mean. You will. The whole thing has been organized by the Lodge. Tell me more about this bake sale. Why is it so important? As I told you, many unfortunates who come to Harvest end up needing financial help. Why is that the town's problem? It's not a problem, so long as those folks are taken care of. It's the will of the Lodge. Okay, she is definitely, definitely batshit crazy and evil. So ask about Stephanie. Maybe she isn't as bad. And just who is Stephanie? Don't you dare talk okay. that sweet girl. So we've asked about. Okay, so we got wedding and fiance. Let's ask about fiance. Fiance? This is insane. I love that oh, face. You're not having second thoughts about marrying Stephanie. Is that what this silliness is? You know, he reminds about? me of Three wedding jitters. Who's that? Something like that producing Eric Asia? from that '70s show. Kinda. Right now and count your blessings. Stephanie is great at cooking and cleaning. Oh no, that would make her like the evil, like <laughs> brunette cookie. Oh yes, Kitty, 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 Kitty. Cooking and cleaning. What's cooking and cleaning got to do with anything? Honestly, oh, boys are so dense. What else is there for a wife but cooking and cleaning? You may not appreciate a hot meal on a clean plate when it's there, but if it wasn't, we'd hear about it soon enough, I'll bet. You're saying that's all there is to marriage? Cooking and cleaning? Well, you'll um, have to ask your father about that, but I'm sure Stephanie will do her duty when the time comes. Duty? Bless your innocence, but there are certain disgusting truths that go along with marriage. Facts that can't be disguised by sheets which wrap around the contours of flexing go-go's and bouncing legs. You can't know what I'm talking about and that's best. When the time comes to make a baby with Stephanie, you'll have to make your peace with the fact that when a farmer plants his seed, he can't help but get some nasty dirt on his hoe. <laughs> yeah, this... By the way, everybody who's watching, this was supposed to be PG-13, but the game itself decided to turn into R. I think so. Wedding? Stop speaking nonsense, dear. What do you, What do you mean nonsense? You. Okay, I'm oh not God. gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna speak bad to you because you know you're my mother who's crazy. So let's Gee, not do that. Look at that face. So let's do Order of the Harvest Moon. Steve, 
Stop speaking nonsense, dear. Not a harvest moon. God. Hold on. No, it was or the just happen order. Stop speaking nonsense, dear. It's to harvest moon. Maybe she knows about the old Super Nintendo game. Stop speaking nonsense. Or dear. the song from the Oyster Cult. How about you are crazy? Stop speaking nonsense, dear. Okay. Let's let's ask about father, cause you know what, father. My father. He's in the other room. He decided to sleep in today. Now please let me get back to my cookies. Let's ask about brother. Stop speaking nonsense, hey. dear. Hank. 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 Okay. Thank you. Hank, that kid over by the television. Your little brother is homesick from school today, and I won't have you scaring him with this amnesia poop. Is he really sick? Look at the show he's watching. Wouldn't you say he's sick? I'd make him stop, but oh, I'm so busy baking cookies for the Harvest PTA charity bake sale. It's on Friday, you know. I hope you're still planning on going. I don't know. I, I need to think. Honestly, skipping out of a charity affair. What's gotten into you? I don't know, damn it. That's what I'm telling you. Don't you dare use that language around me. You're lucky your father didn't hear you. Or Stephanie, for that matter. How do you think she'd feel knowing her fiancé was a gutter man? You give that lady a piece of, you know, your mind. Alright, Steve? You don't take no garbage from her. I doubt she's your real mom anyways. You're adopted. Okay, so... Is there anything else we want to talk about? No, I don't think so. Poop. Stop speaking nonsense, dear. Poop is not nonsense. It's a natural bodily function. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Who the hell is Jimmy? I don't know. I mean, we just woke up into this weird, weird town. And they expect us, you know, they expect us not to speak nonsense, dear. Let's go ahead and do another quick save real quick. Save is going to be I fear for my life. Yeah, you fear for both our lives in this. This is kind of creepy. Yeah. Watch, that kid's going to be alien in Incarnate. Probably. Let's examine the window. A pass through window for the kitchen. <clears throat> clock. A pendulum-driven cuckoo clock, with the cuckoo oddly absent. <laughs> coloring book. A box of crayons and a range writer. Coloring book. The cabinet. Fine bone china. Gleams from the mahogany shelves. Fine bone. A box full of newspaper. You, you just skipped over that? Fine I know. Fine bone. Fine bone china. An old fashioned console television. I want to make sure there's nothing else we're missing here. Let's talk to Hank. What? Oh, don't you start getting snippy with me. I'll smack that cowboy hat right off that head. In the doghouse if you keep bugging me. Because I'm sick. And I'll tell Mom if you don't let me watch TV. Sick TV and Mom. Uh, 
He pisses me off. I'm telling him to eat shit. Say what? You heard me. What's wrong with you? I got a headache and a stomachache. Then why aren't you in bed? Because I want to watch my cowboy show. You look all right to me. I'm not faking. I couldn't go to school because I'm sick. Daddy's sick in bed, too. And Mom believes me anyway. So shut up. Wow. They like the spot on. Little dickhead. Well, let's ask about Daddy. Or should we ask about the cowboy show? So school cowboy show. Cowboy show. Let's go. Well, let's ask about Daddy. I, I'll ask. I'm having. Blah, blah, blah. I'm writing these down as I go. Your dad is asleep. He and Mom went at it last night pretty hard. He stayed in bed. I saw what she did to him. It was pretty bad. What did she? Like you don't know. I saw you and her on the couch last Wednesday night. Guess that's why she's grounded now, huh? Too bad you wouldn't pay me, and I had to tell, huh? What are you talking about? What girl? What? Is there another one, too? Wait till I tell you. There's another girl? I don't know what girl you're talking about. All summer, it's been Stephanie this and Stephanie that. And now you don't remember? You think I'm dumb or something? No, I just can't remember anything, like I said. Well, you better remember quick, because the wedding's in two weeks. What? Leave me alone so I can watch TV. <laughs> I said I don't want to talk about her anymore. That's a weird looking television. Come to think of it, this whole place looks totally retro. What do you mean retro? Well, what do TVs look alike? Sure, basically. But this is one old fashioned clunker. Old fashioned? It's brand new. Yeah, but look at the tube. Where's the remote control? What's that? I. Now that I think about it. I can't remember. And what was that you said about retro rockets? No, retro. It means... It means... Oh, man, I know what I mean. That everything here is wrong. But I can't picture the difference. Then shut up and quit bugging me. I'm watching my cowboy show. Man, this kid. I'm gonna ask about the cowboy show. Did you notice that your show is in black and white? What else? Color? On a TV? Well, I... I think I've seen a colored television before. Have not. Quit it, or I'm gonna tell. Hey, look at that. Your mother lets you watch this stuff? Sure. This is part of history. What made America great. And besides... Oh, gosh. You said America great. Here we go. You're gonna get, like... Hold on, hold on. I think his name's not really Hank. Maybe he was adopted, and his real first name's Donald. Ah, we're going to be making people mad on Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> no, his name's Hank. Everyone forget about that. Look at that face. He looks like Donald Trump. Little kids shouldn't watch violence. Or, you're right. That is really neat. Huh. What should we do here, Boo? Moral Dilemma. Little kids shouldn't really watch violence, I, but I feel like I feel like we just upset somebody if we say that. You think we're going to? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're hitting one. Well, you can't stop me, so let me alone, or else. I mean, it's like you know, you take my advice, but I'm not gonna do it, sort of deal. So, let's do school. Okay, why not just tell me where I am? Because that's a dumb question. And you're not fooling me with that magnesia stuff. Amnesia, you mean? All right, fine. But will you at least tell me what school you go to? The same school everyone in Harvest graduates from. One way or another. I don't understand. You're not supposed to. Yet. That was ominous. So, let's do cookies. Say what? 
<laughs> Rats? Say what? Say throw down the stairs. Hold on. Say what? Say what? You are not a cowboy. Say what? That's right. Okay. Good. Finally. Wow. Oh, shoot. Let's go over here. I want to go into my room. It's locked. Well, if we've learned anything from this. Oh no, we also gotta write down Jimmy. You know, I wanted to ask him about Jimmy. You want to talk to that little brat? Say what? Oh, and he doesn't even know who you. Good. You know, what? I am Finally. so done with you, kid. I'm like two weeks have gone by, and I'm done with you. I hate Hank. I do too. Not Hank. Hank is fine. Oh boy. Can I do this? Can I continue on? Oh boy. Oh, there's Jim. Jimmy James. Hey, Steve, I'm Jimmy wow. James. Remember me? Uh, I guess not. Holy shit, is hey, he from I Spy Kids? Been putting the paper out for me in the morning. Yeah? Well, try to remember, will ya? How'd you expect a working Joe to make an honest living? You don't put the paper out, I'm out of a job. So what? You don't get paid for picking up papers anyway. The Sentinel building burnt down. What the heck else am I supposed to do? Listen, start putting that paper out and everything will be Jake, okay? That's all I want. That and a pair of sneakers. Walking this route every day has worn holes in mine. Say, you got any spare sneakers? You know, he's sassy. I'm not related to him. He's straight to the point. He has a good work ethic. I'm gonna go with him. Let's see if I can see him. That's great. Maybe we could try. What could you give me? You know this Whaley and Principal Harold down at the school? Well, I found out they're messing around with each other in the broom closet. I can tell you when they meet and trade you some keys that'll let you catch them red handed. What do you say? You know what, kid? You may have a deal. I am just deranged enough to go along with this. Before I give with the keys, let me see those sneakers. First the keys, then the sneakers. Nuh-uh. If you're trying to pull a fast one on me, get it. You don't get the key till I see the sneakers. And that's that. See you later, alligator. So I gotta go back in and pick up some sneakers. Disc. A day glow Lima space disc. Day glow is sort of like what they use to reference like neon like colors. So this disc is stuck on the roof. Mailbox is full of junk mail bills and bake sale flyers. God, this town's so ass backwards. An army surplus air conditioner. Army surplus? So maybe father's from the military. Antenna. Steel barbs. Wrench signals from the naked air. And power lines. High voltage power lines. Bathe your home in a wholesome, old fashioned, old fashioned electromagnetic field. You feel their humming in your dreams.
that can't be good. Let's go inside. If we can't find some sneakers, we're just gonna rip them off of Hank. Grab, grab the coat hanger hook. And just beat him with it? Yeah. Dude, Knock why? Don't I have a pair of sneakers lying around? Take off your shoes. You can, um, throw your sneakers at him like, um, George, George W. Bush. Heh <laughs> heh. Why come I can't pick up these? These are saddle shoes. Can I just give him saddle shoes? I don't know if he's smart enough to know the difference. What the hell is the difference between saddle shoes and sneakers? Say what? Good. I'm not Ooh. sure. Why, why do they have so many Nat Magazine papers there? Oh, bye, Jimmy. He's gone. Jimmy's gone. Oh man. Damn it. Well, that didn't work. Well, that didn't work. Yeah, that's, that's a good 1950s mom. Don't send my kid off to college. He goes straight Damn. right into marriage. We're on a mission. Where do we go? We have the Johnson residence. An abandoned house. General house. store, post office, barber shop, lodge, missile base. What the hell? God, this town is so fucked up. Shady Oaks Mortuary, cemetery, the abandoned house, Potsdam. Let's give a quick. I guess we're going to abandoned house. Saving? Ooh. Spooky. Mistakes were made. Examine the car. Why not? The old car is the perfect nasty ground for wasps. The attic window is the perfect nesting ground for wasps. This whole house is the perfect nesting ground for wasps. This place could sure use a gardener. Smoke weeds every day. Gutter. No. The gutter is... The rusty gutter is the perfect... Why, <laughs> why do I even... The door is the perfect house for the wall. Oh. Oh. Icebox is sealed shut with wasp nests. My lord. There's wasps everywhere in this house. Her hair is the perfect nesting ground. Examine picture. A ra rather colorful picture of a wasp. From the sound of it, these cabinets are infested with... Oh my... Lord. This Wasps. place is hell. This is hell. This, this is scary. This nest. It's a wasp nest. I'm surprised it doesn't say 
It's the perfect nesting ground for wasps, or maybe for this lady. What is she doing? Talk to is Tetsuo Crumb. Now I get visitors. I am Tetsuo Crumb. The ignorant of harvest called me the Wasp Woman. A pejorative, no doubt. Born of fear and a poverty of imagination. I don't understand. The politics of honey. The Judeo-Christian rites of sacrifice and conventional taboos against unbridled pleasure are all responsible for the prejudice against wasps. Sacrifice, pleasure, wasps. Okay, she worship wasp. Why? Let's talk about honey. Honey. I don't see any oh, particular use for wasps. Why must everything have a use? Is money always the determining factor? More slender, more aerodynamic than the bee. The wasp is a joy to be Oh, oh what? Beautiful. Oh, what kind of black Intensive. magic did she cast? Isn't that enough to compensate for the little drawbacks? You know, I gotta ask about the honey again. Because I didn't listen to the first part. The politics of honey are intertwined with the age old struggle of the aesthetic versus the commercial. Because I choose to raise wasps instead of bees, I'm frowned upon by the community. Why? Well, raising bees is acceptable because they produce honey. But sometimes, it's not what is produced. So much as what is performed. I don't see it. You isn't that enough? Okay, so we want to ask about drawbacks? Well, as you can see, the little darlings do love to sting. Another source of prejudice for the masses. And another reason to that face. Bees are like animals. They sting only for a reason. For sacrifice. They have no conception of individual sensation. Of pleasure. Tell me more yes, about this. A great deal of pleasure. The wasp is a sensual being. Not a laborer. Hedonistic instead of industrial. Something from quick to end. In truth, they are easily swayed to ecstasy. They penetrate your flesh. And the muscular contractions what? in their body. What the hell? Venom this could be this lady. to the muscular contractions of ejaculation. Really? Each pain well. An act of love. Grandma, let me just tell you, I'm sorry for whoever abused you when you were a kid, but that's not how most people see it. Okay. You talk about abuse? Do we already ask about sacrifice? When no, we have it. Stings, it rips itself This appeals to those raised worshipping a god that demands sacrifice and atonement. But the wasp is promiscuous. They are not as sympathetic to the masses because they don't die when they sting. They live to sting another day and they take pleasure from it.
counseling. A triviality. <laughs> who um, abused you? Type who abused you. Who abused you? A triviality. Okay. Hmm. Crazy wasp lady, you may know my mother. Are you interested in conversation about cookies? A triviality. What about Hank? Yes, A please say Hank. Jimmy? A triviality. How about father? Maybe you've slept with him. A triviality. <laughs> Stephanie. A triviality. Um, the lodge. Uh, Ask lodge. her about the lodge. Lodge. Smart lodge. A triviality. My lord. The order? Or order? Um, nests. A triviality. Guess we're done here. And her name is Tetsua Crumb. She has like a oddly inspired Asian themed name. It's like Asian and English. That's Sua. Okay. So I think we're done with this residence. Let's do the. Actually, let's go back here. Let's quickly say, I get the feeling like I'm gonna die any second here. I'm like literally anxious. I know the feeling. We're gonna go to Potsdam's residence. Garage door, sure. The garage needs a new paint job. Let's call Hank. Cause we all know his ass ain't sick and he's sitting down watching TV. Examine the window. It's too high to look into. Curious. Except window. This overhead window is shaped like a wagon wheel. Something, something, wagon wheel. Examine the window. Look, the glass is so clear, the reflection makes it difficult to see. Birds. They're living dangerously. Gutter. It must have rained recently. Go inside the house. Let's go inside the house. Let me in. Oh, it's John Goodman. It's like John Goodman and George Carlin had a baby. We're gonna look at your stuff, buddy. Don't worry about it. Giant mutant asparagus. Inexplicably robust, given the fact that it's encased in red concrete. Perhaps the health... Healthful electromagnetic fields of the harvest? Ashtray. The ashtray is shaped like a particular human organ, which shall remain nameless. This place is fascinated with fallacy and getting injections and ejaculation. It's probably shaped like a penis. I'm just putting what it out the there. Hell? What the hell is that picture on the background? Oh yeah, maybe it's someone's hand in, like, prosciutto. Um, that is like prosciutto. I know. A funerary urn. A puny funerary urn. Is the cabinet sole occupant? English. A la 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 la. English. Speak it. Um, almost made of leather. Polyester. The upholstery is, is stained after years of profuse sweating. Not this guy. The man of the house squeezing his meat. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh lord. Miss Flotsam? Is that her name? Miss Potsdam. Oh. Sorry. You'll have to ask Mrs. Potsdam for permission to see Stephanie. She's in the kitchen. Oh. Oh, oh no. I'm gonna die here. Hmm. 
Let's talk to Mr. Potsdam. There he is, my future son-in-law. And how's he doing today? What brings him to the Potsdam household? Huh? Huh? I don't want him to know anything's amiss. I came over to see Stephanie. Oh, you'll have to ask the missus about that. Stephanie's grounded to the wedding. <laughs> Can't have her changing her mind at the last minute. Not with all that meat at stake. Father, meat. Meat is the foundation of any decent society. Everyone needs at least three servings of red meat a day. And anyone who says otherwise is a commie. And once you're married to Stephanie, I'll be part of the family too. And your father will give me all the meat I want. <sighs> Kind of makes up for not getting into the lodge. Do you and my father have an arrangement with sharing each other's meat or something? Should my mom know about this? She's in on it too. I haven't seen That's why she always smiles. Father. He's locked in a room. He's not going to die, is he? Like I said, I don't know. That woman, mom, tends to him herself. Well, next time you see him, be sure to tell him that I said hello, and tell him that I'm praying for his speedy recovery. And also, would you remind him about the meat? Especially about the meat. Yeah, fine. If I see him. You should be more concerned. If he dies, then who's going to take over the slaughterhouse? Who's going to tend to the meat? I guess as his son, you'd take over. Right? Oh, God. I can't imagine a better job than working in a slaughterhouse. Hmm. Should I say I don't want to work in a filthy slaughterhouse, or I think working in a slaughterhouse might be cool? Might be cool. We don't want to throw them off too much. Yeah, because we want to be just dandy. And you can't argue with success. Everyone in Harvest gets their meat from your dad. What a grand business to go into. Oh, sure. Cutting animals open may not be much fun. Reaching into their bodies and yanking out the bloody guts, intestines dangling and slapping against you. The smell of death and shit in your nostrils all the time. Well, those are all definite cons. Which the guts have been washed into the gutters. What are you left with? Meat. Rows and rows of scrumptious red meat. Meat is the foundation of... Lodge. I'm so anxious to get into the lodge. There's wonders inside. I've heard there's more meat in there than they know what to do. Now that you're of age, Steve, you might go down to the post office and fill out a lodge application. They're always They're looking always for new blood. New blood. Huh. Huh. So we gotta go to the post office. Marriage? Tell me about this wedding. Well, it looks like we're going to have to hold the wedding down at the funeral parlor, since I'm not a member of the lodge. <laughs> Mr. Moynihan has given his okay, and your father is going to cater the affair <laughs> with plenty of meat. Mr. Um, so we got another name. Mr. Moynihan. Moynihan. Okay. Moynihan is the undertaker. He also runs the Wayward Hotel. Since he's providing the space for the wedding, you might stop by and say hello to him just to be sociable. But whatever you do, be sure to say hi to your father for me. Will you do that? Tell him hi. 
and remind him of the meat. Mrs. Potsdam grounded Stephanie. So, you'd better go ask her permission before you go upstairs. Sorry, so you Stephanie. have to ask them The last the thing I want to do is upset you and your father before the wedding. Not with the meat at stake. You will remind your dad about the... So done talking with this guy. He's like completely useless at this point. The entire kitchen has a minty fresh look and scent. Minty, minty, minty. Plastic plant with freshly watered soil along with little styrofoam balls. Okay. Icebox is locked. Bushes are preventing it from opening. Hello, Steve. Have you floss today? Oh my lord. She does look like the mom. Honestly, you men can insult a woman without even knowing you've done it. What a horrible thing to say. You're both standing around baking cookies. Same kind of dress. Same pearls. So bizarre. There's nothing bizarre about baking cookies. The Harvest Charity Bake Sale is Friday, you know. And by gosh, Mrs. Marvin Potsdam Jr. can be counted on to do her share. Just because I'm doing housework doesn't mean I have to be a drudge. It's a wife's duty to look good for her husband at all times. What's wrong with wearing pearls, for heaven's sake? Nothing, but you look like June Cleaver. Some kind of sitcom mom. Sitcom? Jeez, you know, a situation comedy. The weird part is, I can't remember how I know that. I'm much too busy with housework to watch TV. Maybe Mr. Potsdam would know about sitcoms. Stephanie doesn't watch TV, though. She's grounded. So we want to ask about grounded. Next. You mustn't be too hard on Mr. Potsdam, Steve. He's a disappointed man. No matter how many lodge admission forms he fills out, they keep turning him down. He has a new application in, though, so keep your fingers crossed. If he joins the lodge, you and Stephanie can have your wedding in the Chapel of Love rather than over at Moynihan's place. Chapel of Love? I don't like the sound of that. Lodge wedding. Mr. Moynihan runs the Wayward Hotel and the Shady Oaks Funeral Pavilion. It's rumored he has connections with the Lodge. But the Order keeps that kind of thing secret. So Mr. Poston has tried to get him to put in a good word for his lodge application. But so far... Hmm. What are you gathering from this, Pooh? She's not telling you everything. She knows a lot more than she's letting on. That is my thoughts exactly. My thoughts exactly. What can you tell me about the law? She's obviously a clone. Just that they're exclusive and secret. If you're curious, you want to pick up a lodge application at the post office and take it over to the sergeant at arms. Isn't that a thought? Forget Mr. Potsdam. If you became a member of the order, we could hold the wedding inside the lodge. My, wouldn't that be lovely?
They are really pushing me to join this lodge. This is like some kind of cult. Tell me about this wedding. Well, it's set for three weeks. We're holding it over at Shady Oaks. Mr. Wait, wait, wait. Three weeks? Water. They Say said what? two. Now, I know it's not a very romantic place, mm. but there's nowhere else to hold it. Thanks to Mr. Potter. Okay. okay. Ask about Stephanie or Grounded. Grounded, that's right. Okay, hold on. Well, we will, we will. Um. Say bake sale. I mean, these are these two women have been enamored by this bake sale. Oh, it's on this Friday. Charity bake sale. What is it supposed to benefit? Oh, I just like talking about gruesome subjects. When you get right down to it, all charity is pretty ugly, isn't it? I don't follow. Ask Mr. Moynihan. He's organized this event in conjunction with the lodge, naturally. But they said it was for people that wander into Harvest. You know, bums and such. Does she know about Jimmy? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Did I type it right? Sorry, I didn't okay, catch yeah, that. Okay, yeah, I did. I thought I typed in like a semicolon or something. Say Tetsua. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Tetsua? T E T. What did I type? You typed T te te Tetsua. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, boobs? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, uh, the ball? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Ah, eh, she doesn't play baseball. Okay. So grounded. Mr. Poston feels there's too much at stake to allow Stephanie to run around loose. She doesn't want to get married either, huh? Are you saying you don't want to marry my daughter? I don't know your daughter, Mrs. Potsdam. Why is she grounded? Afraid she'll run away before the wedding? No! She's as delighted as we are about the wedding. Every bit as delighted as we are. But she might get hit by a car or a falling piano or who knows what. Mr. Potsdam wants us all to be one happy family, and he doesn't want to risk anything happening at the last minute. Hmm. Do I ask to see her or let her out? I don't think they're going to let her out. I'm going to see if I can see her. I don't see any reason why not. Oh. Bye bye. Give my regards to your parents. She is fucking creepy. Dude, creepy does not even sum up the half of it. Let's see something real quick. Okay. Plastic plants go. This one seems cool. It's made of high tech Tupperware. Trademarked. I'm just letting you know it's 127, by the way. Yeah. Plank has had his mouth removed. This device is slowly releases noxious swelling chemicals into the hallway. Noxious chemicals? Book, several books about red meat and its importance to living well. Examine shoes. A pair of ceramic baby shoes. Can I pass these off as sneakers? These books are obviously banks. It's, you know, one of those things. It's a lamp mirror. Your makeup looks just fine. Closet? A closet door won't budge. Got a newspaper, a pen, and a quarter. Oh, 
we'll, we'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. I want to see what's in this room. We're in the party. Wall picture. The picture on the wall is hanging a bit crooked. Uh oh. Ooh. Oh, I hope there's no nudity. It's the last thing I need on Twitch or YouTube. Whoa. Examine the medicine cabinet. The medicine cabinet reeks of various toiletries. Towels. Now here's one. Overly used paper towel. Okay. Medicine cabinet. Floss. Dental floss. 300 yards of it. Give it here, Buster. Band-Aids. Scattering of Band-Aids. Toothpaste. Be sure to roll the tube from the bottom. Tampons. Tampons. Better ask Stephanie about these. New I guess I'll take some. I'm there we have it, people. I'm taking tampons. Awesome. Can't take the trend, you know, like the uh, flabbergasted vitamins. <laughs> New zippy vitamins will pick you up. This is what they had before speed. I guess I'm taking that too. Yeah. I guess we're gonna freaking get high off of tampons and vitamins. And we'll get uh, some cough medicine in there. <laughs> uh, let's get some let's see, aspirin. Got a headache. The as This aspirin should do the trick. I guess okay. Now we got now we got opioids. Okay, cough medicine. One hour cough medicine. Holy crap! It's wow. gonna be like, this Kids. is gonna be like Breaking Bad. Warning. Kids, do not do this at home. Yeah, please do not. Warning. Yeast disinfectant, not to be used for baking cookies. I'm gonna take that too. No, we can't have oh, yeast yeah. disinfectant. Who knows? Maybe Stephanie has an issue we can help her with. What's that large jar? Oh. Well, the large jar was something we couldn't take. Extra strength oral lube. Great for getting in and out of tight spots. We're taking oh. lube. We're taking lube. So we got, we got lube and speed. We're going to be the talk of the town. Plant. Someone's been using this plant as a toilet. Oh god, gross. Picture. She's pretty. Can we have her? No, I can't have the picture of the lady. Feels like coarse sandpaper. It'd be painful to wipe with this stuff. Why? Operate toilet. Examine trash can. Lots of used tissue fill the trash can. Some of them are stuck to the sides. Man, they just... Ew. Stiff towels are stiff as boards. She's... It... Okay. Okay. Uh, examine bathtub. Thin la layer of hair coats virtually every inch of the ceramic. And the rubber ducky has seen better days. Ew. Poor rubber ducky. <laughs> The window of words is stuck on your view uh, of the window siding. Salmon radiator. Just like the one back home, except it's pink. Furniture, she has nice taste. We're going to be wrapping up here in a second after we're done talking with Stephanie. You know, just in case we say something stupid, we are going to save. Always save. Who are you? What are you doing in my room? Haven't you heard? We're getting married. So, you're the one. Steve, isn't it? You mean, you don't know me? 
I mean, I don't know anyone. I don't remember anything. How many times do I have to say it? Just one, Stephanie, because I can't remember a damn thing either. Really? Oh, God, I thought it was just me. You're not alone. Can you tell me what's going on here? Those people downstairs have locked me in my room. They say I'm grounded until the wedding. Holy um, shit. Wow. Wow. Another same person. Another same person. Oh my goodness. Amnesia. That's a question we don't have in our book. You know what, Miss Stephanie? I think you're all right. Let's talk about those people. They claim to be my parents. I can't dispute it because I can't remember for sure one way or the other, but it doesn't feel right. Do you have any idea where you do belong? No, but I'm fairly sure I don't belong in Harvest. Yeah. I can't remember anything, but I feel in my heart that the woman downstairs is not my mother. She's like this thing, like a parody, a bad joke with mother as the punchline. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I totally feel you. I'm glad I'm not the only one who sees it that way. I thought I was going crazy. Join the club. But we can't both be crazy, Stephanie. Either way, something really weird is going on here. I've got to escape, and so do you. Because in a way, whether you know it or not, I think we're both grounded. Well, I'll ask about escape in a second. It's been hell. They treat me well, but they won't let me leave this room. Not even to go out in the yard. Not until the wedding. They won't tell you why? Each one blames the other for grounding me. They make up different excuses. Different things I did. None of which I remember. So I sit up here. Watch the world outside my window. And listen to the noises in the house. Have you heard or seen anything that might help us figure this thing out? Every morning, a weird boy comes to the house and picks up the paper. He doesn't deliver the paper. He picks up scrap paper that Miss Potsdam sets out on the porch for him. Some morning, she forgets, and the boy gets furious. He gives me the creeps. Anything else you can tell me? I hear these weird scraping sounds in the bathroom sometimes like something is sliding along the wall claws maybe and mr potsdam i don't like the way my dear daddy looks at me both of them are always watching me especially him you don't think they're dangerous do you i think this whole place is dangerous i think we've got to escape before it's too late The wedding is only three weeks away. Not much time to get to know each other, is it? Ah, the wedding's no. not gonna happen. If it comes down to it, we just won't take the vow. I don't think anything in Harvest is that simple. Too many people are determined that we get hitched. Why? Potsdam wants the meat your father promised him. Your parents want to force you to settle down. Mrs. Potsdam wants to have the wedding in the lodge. Me? I just want to escape. Everything in Harvest seems to revolve around this damned lodge. This order of the Harvest Moon. They're responsible for this insane bake sale that's coming, and for the Harvest Blood Drive, too. When people talk about the lodge, it's always in this hushed, reverent tone. Mom keeps telling me that women can't join, but she keeps pressuring me to get you to join. 
She's not the only one who wants me to sign on with the Lodge. That's probably the worst thing you could do. You think the Lodge is some kind of trap? I think all of Harvest is a trap. That's true. Maybe joining the Lodge is the way out. Look, why not explore the town a little? I can't get out of here, but if I could, that's what I'd do. Maybe you can figure out what's happening here without going anywhere near the Lodge. You're really afraid of the Lodge, aren't you? I look at that building. All lit up at night, and I get scared. I mean, look at the damn thing. Seem like a harmless bunch of masons to you? Kinda yeah, looks like Lucy McGuire a bit. Kinda. Get out of here, Hillary. Escape? Harvest is a prison, Steve. Don't forget that. I think you're right. Of course right. I'm right. Amnesia. Maybe my amnesia isn't total after all. You're familiar to me. Like we've met before. In another life. Maybe we really do live here. Maybe we were together, and the same thing happened to both of us. An accident. Something. Neither of us has bumps on our heads, if that's what you're getting at. Have you been able to remember <laughs> anything else? Anything at all? Well, I have had these recurring dreams. Just fragments, really. Strange, abstract images. Liquid, chrome. Probably just a dream. Well, have you thought about how to escape Harvest? Cookies? You're not making sense. Sacrifice? You're not making sense. Come back and visit me soon, okay? Let's go ahead and save and spot one. Alright everybody, I'm your host Euclidean Mine, I was joined by Boo, we were playing uh, Harvest. We'll get back to doing more of this and unravel the mysteries around Harvest and my amnesia. Well, Steve's amnesia. So I wanted to thank you all for joining and tuning in and all that good stuff and we'll catch you next time. Say goodbye, Boo. Yeah, bye. Go, go for the eyes, Boo. Ah!